Wonder Woman 1984 is a 2020 film that I've been anticipating for the last like year and a half to two years. I remember they released some images and the movie was supposed to come out um, November 2019, but then it got delayed six months. I think, no, no, it got delayed four times. Yeah, it's supposed to come out June 2019. And then it got moved to November 2019 because of the pandemic. And then it got moved again to next year, to this year, 2020. And then it's supposed to come out June of this year, but they got delayed again to October. And then they finally released it on Christmas Day on HBO Max. And I'm in Canada. And where I am, theaters are not open for some reason, even though everything else is, which is annoying. But I just rented it for the $30 because, you know, I've been waiting for this movie for so long. At least I have a decent TV. So I just rented it off YouTube for $30. And I have to say that this movie was very disappointing. It's a big, massive letdown. But for me, you know, I had to watch this movie immediately. I did not want to wait to see if my theaters open up in two weeks. I did not want to, you know, wait for any other way to watch it. I just I mean, I had to do it, you know. Wonder Woman was my favorite film of 2017, so I was really pumped for this movie. And um, um, so overall, let's go into the story. Wonder Woman 1984 takes place in 1984. Uh, Diana Prince now works at the Smithsonian. She, uh, you know, uses her language skills and her knowledge of history to help, you know, with the artifacts there. And she um, does occasional vigilante work on the sly, you know, like... Um, she stops a mall robbery at the very beginning of the film, which leads into the plot of a magical wishing uh, rock, stone thing. And uh, we introduce uh, friendship with Barbara Minerva, a fellow nerd. She's awkward. And uh, they introduce Maxwell Lord. He is an um, uh, oil tycoon, snake oil salesman type uh, TV personality. And a lot of people like to mention that, yes, um, Pedro Pascal is very Trump-like. And yeah, I didn't really care about that but what really bogged me down was the story the movie is pretty long it's two and a half hours long it's longer than the first wonder woman by 10 minutes or so and um yeah it feels like barely any story happened so chris pine comes back as steve trevor and i remember when they released the cast list of like people who were coming back i tried to guess the plot back in like 2019 Sometime I did a video about it and I was wrong. I was so wrong on the plot. Uh, that's the thing though, this movie should have been amazing. It could have been, but I think they switched up the writer. The writer of the first film really nailed the characters right, the dynamics between them. And a lot of people don't like the third act of the first movie, but I do. And um, they switched the writers completely. It's David Callaham, it's Patty Jenkins and maybe Jeff Johns uh, doing this one. So the movie opens with a very stunning sequence on Themyscira, which sort of ties into the whole plot. Then we switch to modern day where Diana does her vigilante work and she ends up having to face off against Max Lord and eventually her former friend, Barbara Minerva. There's way too much going on in this movie. The return of Steve Trevor um, slows things down. I like the dynamic. I like the acting. The acting is great. Um, but besides a couple of excellent sequences involving, you know, fireworks or the White House or the opening scene, the movie is very unfocused and all over the place. It's very bloated and it's trying to be like bigger and badder and better than the first movie. And that's what made the first movie so charming. You know, the first movie was like a better version of Captain America. And the characters, you know, it felt like a 1940s screwball romance comedy in a war film in a, with fantastical elements. This one doesn't even feel like a superhero movie. Um, Diana's barely in her Wonder Woman outfit for half the movie, you know, she's, uh, her performance is great though. I noticed that like in the first movie, she plays Diana with such like naivety and like, you know, wonder, charm. And in this movie, she's a lot more jaded, you know, it's been like seven decades. So she's like a lot more cut off from the world. She's very dour and, um, the performance really shows it. And uh, I really liked uh, also Kristen Wiig. I've seen her do, do serious films before, like um, The Skeleton Twins and uh, other things. But um, my girl Barbara Minerva got totally shafted in this movie. Um, she starts off as a meek, dorky girl and then eventually gains her confidence and becomes the cheetah literally within two seconds. They didn't give her a proper origin story. 
It felt so rushed and out of place. It just it totally killed me because Cheetah is like one of the big arch nemesis of Wonder Woman, you know? It's like, can you imagine watching a new Batman movie with Robert Pattinson and Joker shows up and he's just like, I'm Joker, no backstory, you know? Just, he just shows up and it would just seem kind of odd. And definitely Barbara Minerva feels like her storyline just got quashed somewhere. I don't know if that had to do with the thing because they're going to release the film uh, 2019 in June. They delayed it six months because Patty Jenkins wanted more time with the movie. So I don't know if they were you know, working on visual effects or the script. But yeah, there's just so many plot elements going on because there's three main characters. You know, there's Diana Prince and her the return of her love. There's a Cheetah, you know, or Barbara Minerva becoming Cheetah. And then there's Maxwell Lord who gets basically most of the storyline. He hogs most of the movie. And he's a different kind of villain because, you know, he's not physical, which is really cool. It's interesting to see, like, that sort of thing. But the movie's magic system is so all over the place, you know. It's, it's very vague. It's very like, okay, this is the rule system. And then it's like, ah, but then we can just change it. And then just, like, people can do this now. And then they just, it sort of just kind of felt like it was just going along as it went. And there was no concrete rules, you know, like... I did not like that, you know, and the ending definitely felt rushed. The movie's two and a half hours long, but it feels like I wanted more, you know, so the movie definitely wasn't like cohesive and focused, you know, and, and another big thing, probably the biggest complaint I have about the film is that the action sequences are definitely not up to par with the first film at all. I mean, the opening sequence is probably the best part of the movie, and then there are four other action sequences that don't really capture the wonder of the no man's land sequence definitely not i mean they kind of they use the theme a little bit and you think you're gonna gear up for an awesome sequence and not really there, there's some cool stuff in the action sequences themselves i think the white house sequence is really awesome too but you know i honestly felt like the plot was all over the place and um very vague and it just kind of like kept going along and the movie definitely needed to another rewrite you know needed to like pare down some of the story elements here and there and try to make a more tighter cohesive movie you know because i felt like it was like really bloated you know that's the biggest thing i felt while watching the movie and not to say that the movie doesn't have a lot of charming moments there's some excellent sequences in here involving fireworks the white house sequence the opening sequence um, there's like great moments in the movie but compared to the whole movie itself yeah it just it feels like a drag, you know, kind of like Batman v Superman is the same way. There's some great sequences in Batman v Superman, but if you compare it to the whole two and a half hour to three hour movie, it just, you're just like, oh, I don't want to rewatch the whole movie for that awesome sequence, you know? And um, yeah, the only difference between this movie and the last one is that Patty Jenkins got more directorial control this time, and she switched up the writer. Uh, Alan Heinberg did not return, and it's her... David Callahan and Jeff John. So I'm guessing maybe they didn't have the best story or they're, they're trying to do too much politics in there. I don't know what's going on, but it felt like um, everything, you know, everything's there. Just the movie should have been better. That's just my opinion. So Wonder Woman 1984. Um, I mean, it's worth watching if you're a really big fan of Wonder Woman. There's some nice Easter eggs in there, especially uh, some really great Easter eggs, like a three or four really good Easter eggs. There's a mid credit sequence, in case, uh, just in case you don't know about that. Uh, but overall, the movie, I, I definitely not going to run and rewatch it over and over like the first movie. So I give uh, Wonder Woman 1984 a 5 out of 10.